When I was growing up in rural Wisconsin, most of the time, if I saw any type of photography, it was in the newspaper. My parents didn't subscribe to many magazines, and most of the picture books around the house that I had access to were scenic views of Switzerland or something like that. Doctor's offices had pictures of nature or cityscapes. I swear I saw the same picture with three ducks in like six different waiting rooms. Even in town at the local cafes that I would regularly visit in my teens, they only had a landscape photography for the most part, with the occasional abstract close-up of a coffee mug or something. One day while I was visiting my favorite coffee shop that also doubled as a used bookstore that would rival a Barnes & Noble, I came across a photography book with ghostly figures on the cover. The pictures contained in this book defied every expectation I had set for myself about photography and what it was. They were out of focus, the subject was not centered, the lighting was not immaculate, but it was perfectly suited for the feelings that the images invoked. There were some portraits, some still life, and some things that were completely unidentifiable. I was in awe of these works, and only having a vague idea of how photography and film worked at the time, I was shocked to discover that not only was this particular photographer using medium and large format cameras and printing in an analog darkroom to make his images, he was also a former ballet dancer. I'm Robert Schultze, and this is Light Meter, a podcast discussing the ideas and theories behind why pictures are the way they are. This is a highlight episode where I'm going to talk at length about a particular photographer, image, or event that impacted me as an artist or working professional. I've been in the photography industry for over 12 years, starting off in the Midwest with fine art, moving on to wedding and portrait photography, and then into commercial and editorial work in California. I have various magazines and newspapers as past and current clients, and have worked on campaigns for Erit International, GoPro, LinkedIn, and more. On to the show. Robert Stivers was born on November 7, 1953, in Palo Alto, California. His parents worked in engineering and politics. He studied history at UC Irvine and got his BA in 1976. During this time, he had been taking dance classes at Jimmy DeFord Dance Center, and after graduating, he moved to New York City to pursue a career in professional dance. In this time, he performed with various dance and ballet companies, including the Joffrey Ballet. In the mid-80s, he suffered a serious injury to his back that forced him to retire from dancing. Unable to participate in dance, he went back to school at New York University where he studied arts management. He worked as a stockbroker for a few years, but found it deeply unfulfilling. In 1983, he started working with various commercial photographers in LA as their representative, and by osmosis, he learned all about the craft. In 1988, he began to study photography on his own, taking classes at UCLA and learning darkroom processes and printing techniques. He moved to Santa Fe in 1991, where he utilized his dance background in his photographic and film work and used a Super 8 camera to film himself dance. He would walk around on stage with his dance unfolding and the movie camera on fixed focus. He started to take still images of the monitor using a medium format camera, a Hasselblad 500CM, and began to play with the framing and focus of these images. This body of work became known as Series 5 and was shown at his first solo show in New York at the Yancey Richardson Gallery in 1997. These photographs are also presented in his first book, Robert Stiver's Photographs, which just so happened to be the book that I found at my local coffee shop. The images in this book were mostly figurative portraits that were ghostly, pale, and desaturated, with small objects like the tips of people's noses or chairs and making them feel monumentally important with their scale and its compositional tendency to place things dead center in the frame. The subject matter had a sinister or dark tone about them, with blurry images of figures clutching knives or self-portraits with a noose wrapped tightly around the artist's neck. But there was also a sense of hope about them, a baby emoting a familiar expression or a small animal enlarged to larger than life. Stivers is a darkroom master. He primarily works in 120mm medium format, which can be developed by conventional methods in a darkroom with developing tanks and chemicals, but his printing process is unmatched. Beautiful gelatin silver prints made with an artistry that you can only achieve while making things by hand. He is quoted as saying, I throw them out of focus in the enlarger. Sometimes I don't use negatives at all. I don't know what I will work on when I enter the darkroom, I just know I need to explore the process of printing. I would like to understand the medium better with each excursion into the darkroom. When I want to communicate something, I seem to be less successful. It is better when I let the work and meaning unfold through the process. I throw away a lot of paper.
The discovery of his books and photographs within led me to experiment with harsh, contrasty lighting, unusual abstract subject matter, and analogous color palettes. I was setting up black curtains and backdrops in my basement, turning off all the lights except for one key and photographing at f2 with a shutter speed of 30 seconds. I'm very thankful for digital photography at this time, because of how much trial and error and experimentation this took, I and my parents would not have been able to afford the film processing that this would have necessitated. I was starting to realize what separated this type of work, an artist's work, from the snapshots I saw in cafes. Intent. Instead of shallow depth of field and soft focus being used to give you a sense of depth and place, he would use them to disorient you by giving you no point of reference to locate yourself in physical space. Most photography that I and many others at the time were used to experiencing were sharp and in focus, such as the glamorous photos present in magazine photography, photojournalism, tack sharp landscape images of Ansel Adams in the 1930s. He would capture these blurry, soft images on purpose. And while my attempts to copy these types of feelings and aesthetics in my own work only lasted a brief period of time, his influence has stayed with me over the years. In an assignment for school, we were told to attempt to recreate the work of another photographer as closely as possible, and after much, much experimentation, I was able to successfully recreate Plate 39 in his photographs book, a photograph of a leg, likely referencing his injury and desire to return to dance at the time. His work has definitely changed over the years as he has grown as an artist. His second book, Listening to Cement, released in 2000, brought a larger scale with him capturing statues, architecture, monuments, and landscapes in his blurred visual style. Sestina, published in 2003, brings the focus back down to a smaller scale, focusing on inanimate objects, close-ups of figures, and an emphasis on tonality, a significantly lighter mood than his previous works. In 2005, he showed a series of images he called X-Series, which was an experiment in utilizing the chemistry of a darkroom to create images without a camera. He would start with an exposed, blackened piece of photo paper and scratch off the emulsion in several layers and places. He has a few other books that I've had a hard time finding due to limited availability or collector's pricing. One called Sanctum, published in 2007, and another called The Art of Ruin, published in 2015. His most recent book, Staging Photographs, published in 2017, shows various Polaroids and a look into his creative process, a must-have for any collector or appreciator of his work. He has a darkroom and studio in both Santa Fe and Los Angeles. His work is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Getty Center, Harvard's Fog Museum, the Museum Ludwig, among many others. Whenever I hear of an exhibition by Stivers or a new book is out, I'll check it out. He opened my eyes to what being a fine art photographer could mean at a time when I was questioning if I should even continue this as a hobby, let alone a career. His unique perspective and technique inspired me to spend more time and experiment when I worked in a darkroom myself at school. His striking images still bring a sense of wonder and awe to me, and his role in my early days as a fine artist and up to present times as a commercial photographer continue to this very day. Light Meter is researched, hosted, and produced by me, Robert Schultze. It's also co-produced by Lauren Baines and recorded in San Jose, California. Did you enjoy this podcast? Let me know your thoughts and send an email to lightmeterpodcast at gmail.com. You can listen to us on anchor.com slash lightmeter, and I'm on Facebook at Lightmeter Podcast, Twitter at Lightmeter PC, YouTube at Lightmeter. I know, sorry, there's a lot of variation on the name, but if you search for Lightmeter and see our podcast logo, that's the one. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you next time.